Welcome to our virtual artist demonstration. During this demo, Terry Plaskett will be showing you how he throws a bowl on his pottery wheel. He begins by applying water to a plaster bat that is secured by a pad of clay. He uses his finger to make sure the plaster bat is centered. The bat will allow him to easily remove the freshly th thrown pot from the wheel. He is using a ball of clay that is solid. He firmly throws the clay onto the wheel. He uses his entire body to center the clay on the wheel. The speed of the wheel is controlled by a pedal, much like the pedal you use to control the speed of your car. He can control how fast or slow the wheel spins by pressing down on this pedal. He supports and stabilizes his arms and wrists by planting his elbows into his knees. This along with using his abdominal muscles to stabilize his core helps him counteract the movement of the clay and allows it to be centered with ease. Part of the centering process is squeezing the clay into a cone shape and pushing it back down. This both centers the clay and unifies the consistency. He uses the heels of his hands to squeeze the clay up into a cone shape and then uses his palm to push it back down. Throughout the entire throwing process, he dips his hands and fingers into a bowl of water to keep his hands and the clay slippery. This reduces friction, which would make the clay go off center. Once he feels that the clay is centered, he begins to open up the solid form. He does this by placing his two pointer fingers onto the center of the form and gently pushing down, all the while spinning the wheel with his foot pedal. As his fingers go into the clay, he gently and firmly pulls back on the clay, pulling it towards his body. Again, he makes sure that his hands and the clay are wet. After the clay is opened up enough, he will begin to pull up the walls of the clay. He achieves this by placing one hand on either side of the clay wall. He holds a sponge in the hand that is on the outside of the wall. To pull up the wall, he squeezes his two hands together using his fingers and slowly pulls the clay upward in one fluid motion. Notice for this step, he has slowed down the speed of the wheel. If the wheel is too fast, the pot will go off center and the wall will be uneven. As he approaches the rim, he lightens his touch and smoothly pulls his hands away. In order to get the pot the height he needs, he must go in for multiple pulls. He knows that he wants to make a bowl form, so the swelling of the form that you notice is desired. He is now using a wooden knife to remove any excess clay on the bottom of the pot. This will help the bottom dry a little faster. He is now using a rib tool. This is a rigid tool that helps him shape the form. It refines the shape of the form, smooths the outside of the pot, as well as removes excess clay from the outside. As you can see, the curve of the form is becoming more clear and refined and as he is using his rib, he stops just short of the rim of the pot. He will go back in to refine that with a different tool. He double checks to make sure the form was the way he liked it. He saw an area that needed a little more refinement, so he is going back in just to clean that up. Once the, the form is the way he likes it, he uses a chamois cloth or a simple wet piece of paper towel to smooth the rim. He is using his fingertips and the towel to gently squeeze the clay and give the rim its final shape. He now uses his sponge to remove any excess water from the inside of the pot. If he was to leave this water in the bottom, it would cause the bottom of the pot to form an S crack as it dries. Because he threw the pot on a plaster bat, he can now use a screwdriver to pop the bat off the wheel. This will allow him to remove it without distorting the form. He does one final check and he places his pot on his table to dry. 
The pot will sit on that table overnight to dry. When he arrives at his studio in the morning, the pot will be at a stage we call leather hard. At that stage, it will be firm enough to remove from the plaster bat. He will then flip the pot over and use a metal trimming tool to trim away excess clay and shape the foot. From there, the pot will go into an electric kiln and it will be fired to 1700 degrees. At that stage, the clay is still porous and it will look pink. Because it is porous, he will be able to decorate the pot by either using glazes or oxides. After it is decorated, it will be placed in either a gas or wood-fueled kiln and will be fired to 2400 degrees. When it reaches that stage, the pot will be completely vitrified, making it waterproof, food safe, microwave safe, and dishwasher safe.